We are recording. Okay. If I could just have you sign in, saying that you were here, you can just write your name down there initial. Oh, right up here, I'm sorry. And would you like a copy of <coughs> No, your please, papers? thank you. Okay. So today's meeting is a manifestation determination. I am going to go around and have everybody introduce themselves, one for the benefit of your recording, and two in case there's somebody here you're not familiar with. Sure. Okay. I'm Sarah Durst. I'm his case manager. Right. Kevin Allen, father. Marcy French, school psychologist. I'm Casey Foy. I'm the reading teacher. Kevin Richard, principal. Tom Allen, programming. Kristen Carey may be joining us. She's just resolving another issue for me. She's another one of the program aides that will okay. downstairs with us, okay? Right. All right. The other thing I need you to do before we start, though, is we weren't able to give you your 10-day meeting. Yeah, and I've been advised not to sign any waivers, so I will not be signing any waiver. I'm going to find um, it first. There it is. Well, then I guess we're stuck because I'm not allowed to go on with the meeting unless you either okay. give permission or don't give permission. I'm not trying to be difficult. I just have to go by what I am told with our paperwork. Right. Um, and at the current time, again, I've been advised not to sign any waivers of rights, and I would like to address what happened yesterday because we have some serious issues. We're here supposedly because of Joseph's behavior. My son was attacked yesterday. And after reading through just some of the information on the SAU-9 website, it's very clear that we had an instance of bullying that was identified by my son to both the bus driver and the school, Mr. S. U. It was ignored. My son was attacked by the person that was bullying yesterday, very clearly, in the presence of the person supervising him, Ms. Carey. And now my son is suspended for being attacked after he made the staff aware that he was bullied. Now, he had made this clear to the bus driver, David Gaudet, about two weeks ago. Last week, Ms. Durst, he came to you and told you about the situation with Seth. And your response to him, according to him, was that that was yesterday. What am I supposed to do about it now? I'd like to read to you what was taken from the SAU 9 I don't have permission for us to have this meeting right now. Well, so I don't know. What well, we're not here for a manifestation meeting, okay. evidently. But we are going to discuss this, and we're either going to do it now or we're going to do it in front of the court of law. We're going to find a resolve to this, and we're going to accept responsibility for what we're responsible for. Or again, we will be in front of the court. Because the bullying was identified, and the responsibility of the school... Okay, let's first define bullying. According to the SAU 9 website, the second section, definitions, bullying is hereby defined as a single significant incident or pattern of incidents involving written, verbal, or electronic communication or a physical act or gesture in combination thereof directed at another pupil, which physically harms the pupil or damages the pupil's property, causes emotional distress to the pupil. And I will highlight that because that is the biggest part of this. We are aware of Seth's language to my son, both on school property, on the bus, and other places. Nothing was done. He brought this to the attention of the bus driver and you, and it was ignored. Would you like her okay. to introduce herself for your recording? Excuse me? Do you want her to introduce herself for your recording? Hi, Ms. Carey. Um, so the school was aware on several occasions that a student was bullying my son, Joseph. That same student attacked him yesterday. The school did not follow through with protocol, even when it was identified. And under Section 7, the procedure for reporting bullying at each school, both David and you are accountable for not reporting it to the principal. It only takes one act. And when Seth repeatedly inflammatorily described Joseph's mother and used sexual innuendos to him, you yourself said that every day when Joseph leave and he had to get on the bus, he became angry. Nobody did a damn thing. Now, my son is being penalized after being attacked. And we have other ongoing issues, too. The bus, we've discussed this all last year. David has talked to me last year and also said that this has been a problem on that bus before last year. We're still, a lot of these problems that Joseph is having in school are because of the bus environment. 
they haven't been attended to. I hear all kinds of BS about we can't get a, a monitor or we can't video record. That was what I was told last year. I suggested video recorders. David has requested video recorders in the past. He was told by the school that they cannot do that. That was a blatant lie as well. It says in the school policy under section 16, video or audio is okay to use at the school's discretion. We have an ongoing constant problem with certain types of children and it's not being addressed. My son will not be penalized. If he is not accepted back into school tomorrow, then I'm bringing this to the courts because it's very clear that on several levels the school has ignored their responsibility and allowed my child to be attacked. And I will put a side note in that when somebody's skin is scratched by another individual, it gets medical attention. There's reason to believe that there could be an infection formed from that. Joseph was scratched in this. I don't know why he was body slammed yesterday when he is attacked by another student. But he received no medical attention after he acquired an abrasion, seemingly probably from somebody's fingernail, which can be very dirty. No, no attention was given to that at all. And because of the release of the video that I just put out where the school blatantly lied to all the parents, we could see this as retaliation as well. Now, we've already had instances last year where I was lied to, and sir, Mr. Richard, I still have that recording. The school has been documented, they lied to every parent about the vaccine issue, which is killing our children, and is the major reason for the autism spiral that's gone out of control in this country. The credibility of the school right now is next to nothing, in my opinion. And my son is not going to be penalized for being attacked. Now, as far as the attack, in there, the supervision of the parents. This is par the second paragraph. The board expects all students to be under assigned adult supervision at all times when they're in school, on school grounds, traveling in bus auspices, or engaging in school-sponsored activities. School personnel assigned to this supervision are expected to act reason as reasonably prudent adults in providing for the safety of the students in their charge. This relates to yesterday. The situation, this is Joseph's little map. He was here, across the table, was Seth separated by Miss Carey. The beginning of the incident was Seth being rude to him and throwing a milk carton. A prudent supervisor would have removed that student immediately. It would, did not happen, my son was attacked. That's all about, I, that's all I have to say right now. I want a decision. For Mr. Richard and everybody else involved, or whether Joseph is going to return to the school or not, and if he is not, because of your protocol, which obviously you don't care about staying in alignment with, I will be going to the courts. Because this has gone too far. And last year, you closed the meeting when I wanted to address your lie to my son. And I told you specifically that it related to his education. If he doesn't feel comfortable in his environment, and if he doesn't feel that he can trust the people in his environment, he's not going to learn. Sir, we went the rest of the year with Joseph going out of control because you wouldn't stand up as a man and say that you made a mistake in front of him and heal that wound. I tried to get it through your head that it was very relevant to his education last year. You stopped the meeting, walked out, did not attend to that situation, you hit it. And then you accepted the award for outstanding principal, whatever it was you got. Do those people know that you lied to me and that I have the audio recording of that? I am not going to go through another school year like this. You all know that I will hold Joseph accountable when he does wrong. And damn it, I'm going to hold you accountable as well. And again, that's about all I have to say. Will Joseph be returning tomorrow or not? No. Okay, then that's all we have the for today. The appeal process is written in the, the handbook. And that was the other thing. It wasn't even clear of why he was suspended. You say it's because of incidents on the bus. It's funny that you bring those to my attention after my son was attacked on your watch. So I guess that's the end of the meeting, and I will be contacted. There's some paperwork I can give you. You just let me catch up here for a second. 
and joseph will not be returning to school until this is rectified. if you plan on filing any motions with dhs or the courts i am not going to allow my son to return to an environment that does not protect him. to do so would be a neglectful parent. you have not protected him and he has made great strides since being here last year. you even said so yourself that he's done great except for when he gets out of control. he has a hard time reining it back. that's one issue. compared to all the stuff we went through with him last year he's done great achievements. you guys haven't held up your end of the bargain and now he's being penalized for it. you expect him to be able to control himself after he's repeatedly violated by another student. he brings it not only to the bus driver's attention but to the school's attention. nothing is done and then he's attacked and you expect him to just shut off those emotions. that's why he's being suspended because of the incident yesterday and a couple of things that happened on the bus, correct? there were three main issues that he got suspended for, right Mr. Richard? isn't that what you described to me yesterday? that's correct. that's right. so part of him being suspended is because he was attacked by a student that he identified as being a bully and you're suspending him. that is one third of the reason that he's being suspended. is that correct? no. no. you just said it was you described three things. two incidences on the bus and yesterday's incidences. what happened yesterday that would be a factor in suspending him? i'd like that made clear because from what i understand he was attacked and once he is attacked and especially in this circumstances i don't hold him responsible for his behavior. he's very the school is actually very lucky that he held the self control. he told me that he didn't even get up from his cha his chair during this attack that he put in place every bit of self-control that the student had. how encouraging is that for him to continue his education in the school system? if he knows he has a problem and he brings it to the attention of the people that are supposed to handle this, which last year he didn't do. he would handle it himself and he would get all kinds of crazy, admittedly. real tough student. but he's made changes, he's put what you expected of him into place and he's still being penalized. and as far as the actions on the bus, since this is an ongoing problem for at least well over a year and the school hasn't done anything about it, do we ultimately hold the students in control, uh, responsible for their behavior, if we know they're out of control and we know they're misbehaving and we have the tools to rectify that and we don't do a damn thing about it and then it escalates to this point who's responsible? the student? you put the burden on me? a single father on welfare? I've got to transport my child back and forth to school for 10 days? because the school won't put a monitor on the bus, they won't put videotapes on the bus even after the request of the driver. it's an unsafe environment for everybody and I will note that that bus was also rear-ended recently, wasn't it? yes or no? not anybody here has an answer for any of these things. I'm looking at every face here and nobody has a rebuttal. that concerns me. it concerns me very much. nothing to say Mr. Richard. just a nod of the head no, you have nothing to say nobody else? nobody else has any input? Or they can can't because can we're not having a meeting. oh they can't talk because we're not having a meeting. Yeah. we can't act like civilized people and bring an issue in front of a group of people who are responsible for adults. we can't have a conversation because I won't sign away my rights to something. that's correct? in order to press and move forward we have to have the manifestation. you're talking. I'm explaining to you the process. in order right. for us to move forward we have to have the manifestation hearing. that's the paperwork. okay but I'm not going to sign for a manifestation hearing when I don't feel my child is responsible or should have been suspended. he was attacked. okay so I can give you these and this will be the next process. okay then that's the next process. don't expect Joseph back to school until this situation is rectified and the school makes accommodations for his needs. Okay. there's two different ones and it depends on what what your feelings are. okay? one is a complaint. so if you feel like we've broken the law with Joe, 
This is the one well, that you're going to use. very clear that you have. Okay. If you feel like there's a process issue, issue with Joe and how we've implemented his education, this is the one you want to use. It's really confusing. We're more than happy to sit down with you. Pam Stimson's the Director of Special Education. I've attached her card. Yes, I know, Pam. She was um, uh, going to attend the meeting with us today, but she's home ill. She wanted me to let you know that she's hoping she's feeling better to be back in school tomorrow. Right. So if you want to either call me or her. I probably um, should have conversations with her because this is going to a legal have, avenue and I know right. that she's familiar with the courts and the law and what the school policy right. is more so apparently than the rest of the people at this meeting. She's the director of our special education, so that is her role in all of right. this. And there's paperwork in the back of each of these, and I am not going to be so bold as to tell you which ones to fill out because that's where Pam will, can assist you. That's I don't want to give you a, no, that's a, a fine. wrong information, have you start filling out the wrong paperwork, but it's going to depend on the conversation you have with Pam, which one of these books you end up using as your source. Okay. That's fine. And they'll provide you through the district whatever support you need to, to fill them out. That's fine. I, I'm probably capable of filling out forms um, and whatnot. I, I am disgusted. I'm going to tell you right now, I am truly disgusted Sorry. with the way this school is being handled and managed. And the fact that you can't sit here as reasonable adults who are in charge of our students. And because a signature isn't on a piece of paper, you don't have an opinion, you can't give facts, and you have no input at all. I think you all ought to go home and review not only the policy here at the school, but yourselves as well. We're talking about our children here, and you have nothing to say because Kevin won't sign a waiver releasing his rights. I will have you also know that this will be made public this afternoon. I want to appreciate, uh, thank everybody for.